So just as you can send ultrasound waves through the human body to obtain images of the internal organs, we can use earthquake waves to obtain images of the internal structure of the Earth. Using seismic waves, we've been able to construct a journey to the center of the Earth. Peel back the crust and there's a solid mantle. Under the hard mantle, there's a very hot liquid core. At the center, we find the inner core, which is solid. A remarkable discovery considering we've only drilled 12 kilometers into the crust. P waves travel through the interior of the Earth. They start from the point where the earthquake happened and then dive deep into the Earth. And as you can see, they get deflected by the changing structure inside the Earth. Inside the Earth, there is a boundary that bends the P waves. And this boundary is between the solid mantle and the liquid core. Just as light waves get bent when they change from air to water, the earthquake waves get strongly bent from when they go from solid to liquid. The important thing to note here is that there is a whole zone on the surface of the Earth where if you put a station, you would not observe a P wave. On the other hand, if you put your station here, you would see a P wave from this earthquake. It is this difference, this shadow zone, where you cannot observe the P wave that tells us that there is a liquid core inside the Earth. The P wave shadow zone is evidence that a core of different density exists inside the Earth. S waves, which follow on from the P waves, tell us the core is liquid. The paths are very similar to P waves up to a certain distance from the earthquake. Beyond that distance, there are no observed S waves. S waves cannot pass through liquids. Their shadow zone is caused by the liquid outer core, which is stopping the S waves from traveling through it. 